One of the most common questions I get is how do I make my star fly throughs? Those clips in my videos that portray stars gliding by as I fly into an image that I have shot with one of my telescopes. It's not hard and just takes a little CGI and video editing magic. Before we get into that though, I should add that this video does presume that you have some basic knowledge in video editing. In particular, you will need to understand the use of keyframes to zoom and the layering of information from one clip onto another by way of compositing. But these are pretty basic. So as you can see right now on my screen, I'm loading up an application called Space Engine. If you haven't heard of it before, Space Engine is a planetarium of the entire cosmos. And I'm going to use it to create a CGI journey to a nebula I shot an image of, and then we'll use it to make a generic star field. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Space Engine, I'll tell you it's not perfect, but it really is very good. It has realistic positioning of known stars, and offers photorealistic three-dimensional imaging of certain astronomical objects, and fair to better virtual imaging of many deep sky objects, and good procedurally generated image array of objects that are too far away to actually be seen. And right now using Space Engine, we are getting a view of one of the arms of the Andromeda Galaxy, and now orienting toward its center, and will begin flying through the dust clouds toward the center. It's truly, truly an amazing application, Something I think that many of us as children would have dreamed of and which modern computing technology makes possible. There's so much more to Space Engine, more than just deep space objects. It now presents planetary surfaces with atmospheres and weather. It uses NASA data to present very realistic images of the planets. And as you can see here, we can even get perspectives on nebulae. And one of the most interesting things about Space Engine is it uses actual astronomical information. In other words, it shows things where they are in space. Now, let's go ahead and fly to Earth because it is thousands of light years away from where we are. But as you can see, space is really big. How the heck do we find Earth in all of this? The easiest way is to use the search option. I'll just open it, type in Earth in the text box. And when I click OK, Earth will be selected as a target, which we can see in the upper left. I can then select the center icon to center on it. The position of Earth is now in the center of the screen. I can now click again on the search box, select Go To, and we'll quickly fly to the position of Earth. If only we could do this in reality, we have just now, in a matter of seconds, covered thousands of virtual light years. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, show you how to use Space Engine to fly toward a selected object. You may have noticed the stars disappeared, and that's because if we were at this position in space, looking at Earth, our eyes or camera sensors would have to accommodate the brightness of the world and the stars at this exposure time would be too dim to show up. We can, however, see the moon rotating with the Earth off in the distance. So I put Antarctica at the bottom of the screen, presenting us with an orientation of Earth closer to what we're used to seeing. Now I'm going to orient our perspective a little into the northern hemisphere and we can see the west side of North America along with Mexico and Central America. And I'm going to switch to HDR, which will make the stars visible. And just to the right of the Earth, we can now see the constellation Orion. I rotate around to bring it better into view. It's right here. We have the shoulders of Orion, Orion's belt, the sword of Orion, and the feet of Orion. The hazy area in Orion's sword right here represents a group of nebulae among which is M42, the Great Orion Nebula, which we'll center in the screen. We can center on it by double-clicking on the Great Orion Nebula, or I can go to the search window and type in M42, and then click OK or the Enter button, and we'll see the Great Orion Nebula named in the targeting window to the upper left, and then I can click on the centering icon and we'll center on it now. Now, the best way to make high quality CGI within Space Engine is to use its very powerful video capture mode. We can use it to program a flight path, and we can also set up the video capture tool to make no compromises and render each frame to the maximum possible resolution. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But for now, I'm going to set up our starting position so that our flight path will take us very close to Earth, which will be very dramatic as we begin our route toward the Great Orion Nebula. Setting up the start position is easy. Left click and drag on your mouse to control orientation. Use the WASD keys to move forward and back or pan left and right. The Q and the E keys to rotate counterclockwise and clockwise. And the scroll key to control speed. And the R and F keys to move up and down. And you can customize this to something else if you prefer, or set up a HOTUS or game controller. In fact, you can use a HOTUS to turn Space Engine into a spaceflight sim. I'm going to switch the camera to the HDR viewing mode, and now we can see all the stars behind Earth despite the brightness of Earth. 
And now I'm going to turn on the video capture mode by pressing F9. I'll move the video capture window out of the way. On this box, make sure width interface is not checked. Otherwise, all the controls will show. And make sure set graphics to maximum is checked, which tells Space Engine to process every frame during video capture to the maximum of its ability. Now I'm going to click the camera icon to open up the camera path editor window and also move it out of the way. And on this window, you want to make sure display path curve is also unchecked, at least once you begin video capture. Otherwise, you'll see an annoying display of the camera's program path. While it's not showing in the window, I'm using the mouse scroll wheel to set the speed. About 800 kilometers per second will give us a nice, gentle flyby of Earth. That might sound really fast, but space is really big and Earth is really big too. 800 kilometers per second is very fast, but it'll give us a nice, easy, slow and gentle looking flyby of Earth. Creating the path the camera will follow is easy. On the camera path editor, click on the red circle, that's the recording button, and then press W to begin movement. Space Engine will record the path as you move. We're going to maintain this gentle 800 km per second movement speed until after we have passed Earth. And then we're going to slowly dial up the speed with the scroll wheel until we're moving at about a dozen light years per second. And that's because M42 is about 1300 light years away. If we're going to get to it any time this lifetime, we have to speed up. Because Space Engine presents space and everything else at its real size. Fortunately, as a simulator, it's not restricted by the cosmic speed limit. Now, bit by bit, I'll dial up the speed. We'll first accelerate at kilometers per second, then fractions of the speed of light per second, then AU per second, and ultimately at light years per second. And we'll dial up the speed until we have an easy, gentle movement that will carry us toward M42. I could accelerate very rapidly, but a gentle, natural acceleration looks best. Though, of course, natural here is a very relative concept, since in the simulator, our natural speed will be millions of times the speed of light. When I have reached the pace that the stars are gliding by, then I'll stop acceleration. This time, that'll be around 11 light years per second. At this speed, it'll take a little over 100 seconds to reach M42. By the way, you can see the distance to a target by looking at the top left, a couple rows beneath the object's name. All right, we're coming up on the desired speed and the stars are sailing smoothly by. Now, one of the very interesting things, as I mentioned earlier, is that the positions of the stars that you see sailing by, these are the actual positions of the stars between us and M42. The stellar cartography for any charted object in space is accurate in Space Engine. On the top left of Orion's shoulder, you can see the red glow of the supergiant Betelgeuse and in Orion's sword, a very active nebulous area in fact, you can see all the objects actually in the region. Now, the reason the stars blacked out there for a moment is I switched the view from HDR to automatic exposure. This will automatically try to find the best exposure from moment to moment to reveal things in a natural looking light. If you're staying in the same position, this works very well. But when traveling, it doesn't work so well because it's always looking for an average exposure, hence the flickering. HDR reveals all the stars better, but it also has an unnatural, overbright look. HDR can be useful, but at times it reminds you this is CGI. For the most realistic looking star fields, switch to manual, then adjust the brightness of the exposure to whatever you want. You'll get a more realistic looking stellar fly through that way without the flickering that you get with auto exposure. Camera mode and exposure adjustments are in the lower right. As we get closer to M42, you can see some of the other nearby nebulae, such as the complex on Orion's belt where we find the flame nebula and the horse head. Making CGI space flights from Earth to a DSO that you have shot is a great way to bring life and perspective to those images. And because Space Engine portrays the actual position of the stars and various other objects in the sky between and beyond the DSO that you shot, it is also educational. Now so far, we're just recording the flight path. To actually capture the video, you must first press the stop button, the square, on the camera path editor. Then press the right triangle and the camera icon, and Space Engine will go back to where you started the voyage from and begin recording the flight path. And depending on how powerful your GPU is, this may take some time. Since this time around, Space Engine is going to aim to process each frame of the video to its maximum capability. Space Engine will save the video in its default capture folder location. This is going to be found wherever the Space Engine software itself has been set up. You now have a Starfield fly-through clip that may be ready for your video editing software, but some video editing software 
may find Space Engine videos too information heavy, and the video editing software may want the clip to be somewhat streamlined with a recent codec, otherwise frames may drop. I have a strong preference for Blackmagic's video editor, DaVinci Resolve, but it does want this streamlining of the Space Engine videos, but this can easily be accomplished with some freeware called Handbrake. Just make sure you've updated your computer's video codecs. Then with Handbrake open, select your video and select what formats you want it to be streamlined to fit. Since I'm an online content creator, I'll select 4K for internet usage. Handbrake will process the clip pretty quickly and spit out the outputs into whatever folder you have designated. Now this technique is great for creating a star field portraying yourself flying toward a specific DSO. But you may want a generic star field that you can quickly lay over any DSO that you happen to shoot and want to create a video clip of. To create a generic star field, you need to make sure there are no distinct objects within the field. That's easily accomplished. All you have to do is pick a direction without any distinct objects in it. Adjust your speed to show the star smoothly gliding by, and then click the record button for however long you want. For my generic usage star fields, I will usually run 60 second recordings, but as this is just a sample, I will make a brief recording, maybe 20 seconds. I find stars look tightest and best with the virtual camera set for manual. And using the plus, minus, and back to neutral buttons, which are just right at the HDR auto manual button, I'll adjust the brightness of the stars to what I want. Then I'll press the path recording button and hold down W and begin moving forward again. For this clip, I'll fly 20 seconds, then, on the Camera Path Editor window, I'll press the Square Stop button, then the Right Triangle with Camera button, to begin CGI recording. Space Engine will then fly that path recording video at its maximum capability as it goes along. And when done, I'll drag that video into Handbrake, just like I did with the last one, and prepare it for use in the DaVinci Resolve Photo Editor. Now I'm going to show you how to take one of your images and the star field that you have just created, and turn it into a fly-through. I'm going to use my favorite video editor for this, DaVinci Resolve. You may well use a different video editor, so with that said, I can only show you specifically how to do this, of course, with DaVinci Resolve. If you're using another video editor, you can probably do this, though where your options are and the specifics of how you would go about implementing them would be a little different. But in the end, you need your image and your star field, and then you're going to composite your star field on your image most likely with a screen composite mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag in the Starfield clip and the image that I want to apply the clip to. Since we started out by virtually flying from Earth to the M42 Nebula, let's start out by flying into the M42 Nebula, but this time using the mosaic that I shot a couple months ago. I've dragged the image of the mosaic into the timeline and I'm going to make it 10 seconds long. Then I'll drag the Starfield fly-through clip into the timeline and place it over the mosaic. Now I'm going to begin by clipping off about a half second from the beginning and the end of the clip. There are sometimes some minor artifacts that appear in the moment that a clip begins and in the moment that a clip ends. And the simple precaution makes sure those artifacts cannot show up. Now I'll trim the extra Starfield clip length from the Starfield footage. Then I'm going to set the Starfield clip to the screen composite mode. This will add all the light but ignore the black from the Starfield clip to the Nebula clip. Now you can see the Starfield clip was shot in a rectangular format of about 16.9, giving us overhanging stars. The crop of the Starfield clip needs to match the crop of my camera's square IMX533 sensor. So I'll use the cropping tool to crop the left and the right side of the Starfield clip. And now all we have to do is push the play button to see how well it works and you can see us smoothly sailing through the stars on the way to our beautiful M42 Nebula. If I were so inclined, I could take that original CGI video of flying from Earth to M42 and composite in the actual image I shot of M42 so that it began to appear somewhere near the end of the journey so that the video would smoothly transition from the CGI, which is good but far from perfect, to the very detailed and exquisite mosaic of M42 that I shot with my SCT. And we can cover that too if you want in a future video, but it's not a topic for this one. Let's try this with a different deep sky object. I really like the effect when flying into star clusters. It just feels very dramatic somehow when you're flying into a cluster of stars with a star field and the image and the CGI star field work together so synchronously, so dramatically, they seem to explode into life. 
So let's do this now, and this time I'll apply a bit more zoom to really enhance that feeling of flying in. To accommodate the sensor crop to either side of the star field, we're going to add a black box to the left and the right side of the star field. So that, as we zoom into the image, the illusion of flying into the image isn't spoiled by the sides of the image growing larger. I'll set one black box the size of the screen over the stars and the image, and then move that black box off to the left to the edge of the image. And then I'll set another black box in the layer above the previous black box and above both the star field and the image, and then move that black box off to the right, off to the edge of the image. Now I'll select the image and go to the beginning of it, turn on the keyframes, and then go to the end of the image and activate the keyframes again, and zoom in a little at the end keyframe so that when we play through, the image will appear to get a little larger. It's important not to zoom in too much or the illusion will be spoiled because the DSO will appear to get closer faster than the stars are gliding by. Now I'll press play and we can begin our fly through with the stars gliding gracefully by on our way to the globular cluster. This is a high resolution image, so we can zoom in even more and make for a much more dramatic fly in. I'll begin by deleting the two black boxes then I'll select the image of the globular cluster and reset the keyframes. Then I'll zoom in on the image until the globular cluster fills the viewing window. Then I'll go to the beginning of the image and set a keyframe, and then to the end of the image, set another keyframe and then zoom in a bit. Again, being careful not to zoom in so much that it looks like we are approaching faster than the stars which are supposed to be closer are gliding by. That only takes a moment, and then we can hit the play button and once again experience ourselves sailing toward the globular cluster that we imaged the night before. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? This simple process gives us this three-dimensional living technique that allows us to feel like we are actually flying into those deep sky objects that we spend all nights and sometimes multiple nights imaging. I think of it as just a wonderful alternative way to visualize the incredible cosmos around us. Thank you for watching, and if you have any thoughts, observations, or questions about anything you have seen in this video, please let me know by using the comments section below. And I hope that you can take the knowledge that you've gained here and use it to improve the quality and the beauty of your images and your own joy in capturing and editing them. And with any luck, wherever you are, let's hope the night is cooperating so that you can get out there and shoot the sky.